Hi, welcome to this video on immunization of bond portfolio. I am Vivek Sharma. In this video, I will be explaining the concept of immunization of bond portfolio, which is a strategy to mitigate the risk that bond portfolios face. Let me explain this entire concept in stepwise manner. First of all, we need to understand the market dynamics uh, about interest rate. So as we know that there is an inverse relationship between bond price and the yield or the interest rate, which means that as yield goes up, the price of a bond falls, but the reinvestment income increases because as a bond holder, if you want to generate return from the bonds, there are two ways in which you can generate. One is the capital gain that you can make and second is the periodic cash flow that you get in form of coupon payments and the reinvestment of those coupons. So on any given date, value of the bond portfolio will basically depend upon two things. Price of the bonds in the portfolio that you have based on existing interest rate structure. Remember in a bond portfolio, you may have multiple bonds and interest rate structure will vary across uh, various periods that you have. We know that yield curve is upward sloping. So if you are holding bonds of four year maturity, six year maturity and like that, you know, uh, the interest rate structure applicable to each of the maturity would be different. Additionally, the value of the periodic coupon investments also will define uh, the you know value of the bond portfolio because when you get coupons you tend to reinvest that and make certain gains from that uh, basically you know uh, increase the value of whatever cash flow that you are getting in form of coupon payments reinvest it at a rate and generate returns from that having said this let me tell you that there is a need for immunization that arises because of very obvious reason and that is something which has been explained on this slide also when interest rate goes up price of a bond goes down but the reinvestment income goes up which is very obvious because you know interest rates higher interest rate would mean lower bond price but your reinvestment income would be high why reinvestment income goes up because receivables that you get periodically which is coupons can be invested at a higher rate remember coupon is a fixed payment promised by the issuer unless it is a variable rate coupon. So assuming that coupons are having fixed payments, you will receive an X amount and then you can reinvest it. Opposite happens when the interest rate goes down, which is very obvious. But a point to be noted here is that as long as the loss in the bond portfolio is equal to gain from reinvestment income. So you are making loss in the bond portfolio because the yield has gone up or interest rate has gone up, but you are compensating that from reinvestment income. If you can do that, there's no risk to the bond holder, but that's easier said than done. And uh, it does not happen always because, uh, you know, you will have to see the dynamics of the market and then only, you know, create a bond portfolio, uh, which is suitable to take care of this aspect. Even if you hold a bond till maturity, remember if it is a coupon bond, you will have reinvestment risk. In case of zero coupon bond, this reinvestment risk is not there because you don't get coupons periodically and hence there is no need to reinvest that. Having said this, let me proceed and explain one example to you, which is uh, uh, very easy to comprehend. As you can see here in this particular example, we are referring to a bond and that bond is uh, a bond ABC, which is very clearly mentioned here. Okay, this particular bond has a face value of 1000, coupon of 12.6%, which is just an assumed number per annum, maturity of four years and investment type is what we call as the HTM, which means held till maturity. Now, if you buy this bond, you will be getting periodic payments, four payments in all, 126, 126, 126, and 1126, uh, which basically comes as 12.6% of 1000 is the coupon payment. And in the final year, you get back your 1000 rupees that you have invested. Uh, but what you do is that you also reinvest this income and you reinvest it at the rate of coupon and earn these uh, you know this uh, money uh, this cash flow uh, basically so 126 when it is reinvested uh, when it is received and reinvested at 12.6 percent then in three years time it grows to 179.7 why three years 
because the first cash flow comes at the end of the first year and you have four years to reinvest. So, so, uh, so sorry, uh, you have four years of bonds maturity. So essentially you can reinvest for three years only. So what is the total amount that you receive from reinvestment also? 1607.5. Okay. Now, one more point to be noted is that if the reinvestment rate falls to 10%, then you will receive a lower amount as the maturity value and this is what you can see here when the interest rate has fallen. So what you get is 1584.77 which is the total amount that you are getting because now the reinvestment is not happening at 12.6% but it is happening at 10%. So this value that you see here 167.71 it is nothing but 126 rupees reinvested at 10% for 3 years. And this 126, when it is reinvested for two years at 10%, it becomes 152.46. Now, this is the risk which needs to be immunized. This is what we were talking about as the interest rate risk, which will arise on the coupon payments that you receive. Having said this, uh, uh, let us look at how we can immunize the portfolio. So, immunization is a process to protect the return or yield of the portfolio against future interest rate movement. So, if you want to immunize your portfolio, we'll have to, you know, build a strategy which is based on duration uh, and it will help you to immunize your portfolio in the long run. Uh, we will see how immunization works with the help of an ex uh, example. But let us first see what could be the strategy. If you want to immunize your portfolio, buy a zero coupon bond whose duration is equal to maturity by default because in case of a zero coupon bond, you don't get periodic interest. But if you are buying a coupon bond with where you will get periodic coupon payments, okay, you will need to uh, set the duration equal to maturity and that's what we are going to understand because the first case is simple. You are buying a bond which has zero coupon bond and you are setting duration equal to maturity by default. So just to explain that context, uh, let me tell you that uh, here we have the duration of the portfolio uh, which is what we you know we can see very clearly again is 3.99 which is equivalent to four years okay and in this particular case we have selected a bond whose maturity is actually five years which is very clearly mentioned here it is actually five years okay but it has a duration equivalent to four years so what we are doing in this particular bond is that we are a, we are buying a bond with maturity of five years and we are getting these cash flows okay uh, so five years bond five cash flows 126 126 again based on 12.6 percent only difference is that maturity is not four years we have selected a bond with a maturity of five years we are getting this cash flow next step you are finding the pv of the cash flow you are finding the weightage of the cash flow which you have okay uh, weightage of the cash flow is found by you know dividing PV of the cash flow by the uh, price of the bond and you will get the weightage and then the weightage is getting multiplied with the time. Time is this years. So 1 multiplied by 0 0.111 gives you this value. 2 multiplied by 0 0.099 gives you this value and then you sum it up and you arrive at a duration which is almost equal to 4 years. Now let us move further and see how this will help us. So in this particular case as you can see very clearly uh, what has been done is that you know to reduce the interest rate risk as we can see here okay uh, uh, the bond which was purchased with five years maturity and four years duration will be able to take care of this element of the interest rate risk which is uh, you know this particular loss in the value of 22.74 and that is what we will explain with the help of an example Okay, so let us take the example here and let us see how it works. Okay, so when you buy the bond, you have bought the bond for five years. That is something which we have agreed, but its duration is equal to four years. So what you do is that you reinvest the money that you got from the bond for four years only. So the first 126 is reinvested for three years because you have to get the money in the fourth year at a rate of 10%. That is 167.71 similar like this second 126 is also reinvested the way we saw the way we can see see here third 126 is also reinvested like this okay 
the fourth one which we are getting okay is 126 okay now this 126 cannot be reinvested which is the fourth year coupon because we have to realize the entire money in four years only so we cannot wait for it to be reinvested so 126 is realized in the fourth year but not reinvested but remember in the fifth year we are going to get 1126 which is basically one coupon of 126 and we have the face value of 1000 just to reiterate we are buying five years bond which has a duration equivalent to uh, four years that's the reason we are getting the fifth year cash flow here also okay so if you see we will sell the bond which has five years cash flow uh, fifth year cash flow here okay we'll sell it in the market this will be sold at a yield which is the prevailing yield of 10 percent so what has been written here is 1126 which is the cash flow of the fifth year divided by 1 plus yield which is 10 percent and you get this much amount which is 1023.64 now this is your fifth year cash flow present value in the fourth year so basically you are getting this amount in the fourth year only okay at the big at the end of the fourth year so the total amount that you are receiving is 1608 and you needed 1607 so you have been able to immunize your portfolio here by buying a bond which has a maturity of uh, uh, five years but its duration is four year remember this very important concept that whenever you want to set uh, the interest rate risk or whenever you want to manage the interest rate risk particularly the reinvestment risk you will need to manage it with the help of duration so if you set the duration of a bond equal to its maturity uh, then uh, in case of a zero coupon bond you will be able to anyway manage the risk the no effort is needed otherwise you need to set the duration equivalent to the cash outflow when you are expecting so in this case we were expecting the cash outflow in the fourth year and we have set the duration equivalent to four i hope this video has helped you to understand the concept of humanization if you feel it was meaningful please like my channel do not forget to like uh, this video also and place your comments uh, place your comments in the comment section below so that if you have anything to be explained to you i will be able to uh, explain either as a comment or in the subsequent videos thank you so much for watching this